Oh God, Jess! Oh, what have I done? I just left her down there. I have to go find her. What? Back down there? With those monsters? No, Jerry. She needs you safe. Jess is a strong and resourceful girl. She's doing like we are doing. Surviving. You can't know that. I won't leave her to those animals. Jerry, look at me. If we go back down there, we won't make it to the bottom of that ladder. The others escaped down the tunnel we were gonna follow. We know where they're going. The marine exhibit. That's where Laura would take her. And Yoder is with them. Oh, God. If we're going to join them again, that is where we have to go. The quickest way we can. You're right. We should be able to make better time over land. Can you get us there? Uh, it must be to the north. Near the outlet of the river. The big river? With many falls? Yeah, the big river. Okay, good. That's something. Let me get my bearings, and we'll figure out how to get there. Por el amor de Dios. Do you know where we are? Let me think. It's been so long. This is my first time back on the island in nearly 12 years. Engine has changed it so much. Nima, this island. There's more to it, isn't there? To you, I mean. Yes. It is very dear to me. Tell me. I grew up here, you know? Below those trees. My people were fishermen. We would make our homes near the water during the fishing season. I love the water. I would swim in the ocean. So far. That's why my father called me Nima. I see now. You and your family used to live on this island? My family. Everyone. My whole tribe. This had been our home for thousands of years. I could go anywhere. Run in the jungle. Climb the trees. These monsters. There was never anything like them on this island before. It was all very peaceful before Injun bought the island from Costa Rica. What does your name mean? It means little fish. You know, like uh, the ones that have so many colors. I didn't realize this island had been inhabited before. Injun moved your people? They promised us homes and medicine. Education. They didn't keep their promise. I guess from your point of view, they did. But the homes were slums and the medicine was extra or half-used or contaminated. We had schools, but no teachers. The island is so different now. I know the island. It's part of me. But when Injun came to the island, important men from Costa Rica came and asked my father to go back with them. They wanted my father to make a good impression, so that Costa Rica could ask Injun for a good deal of money for our island. When he was in Costa Rica, he was asked to cut his hair and wear a suit, so that he wouldn't seem simple to the Injun people. Spared no expense. Hammond. The man who made all this. He runs Injun. It's something he always says. He'll spend whatever it takes to make the park a success. So, he spent it all on the dinosaurs. Not on my people. I felt as I feel now. My father was different. I knew him, but some part of him had been lost. I'm sure it was a very difficult time for your father. I know he wanted what was best for our people. He was too trusting. They took advantage of him. He sounds like a brave man. Were you too close? When we were on the island, yes. We were always together. My father was an Awa, a spiritual healer. He sang for Sibo, who created the Earth. He was very important to our tribe. But after we left the island, he would not keep up the old traditions. He was always unhappy. What is Sibo? That mountain there. It is like a house, my father said. My people believe that the animals of the world built it. Before Injun. And my father and I would go to the ocean to fish. When I would swim in the ocean, my father would say, Nima! Little fish! Little fish, do not swim so far. I cannot catch you so far out. When Injun came to move us to Costa Rica, I became very angry with my father. Whatever he would tell me to do, I would refuse. But he would never be angry with me. He would say that I am a fish who would never eat the fisher's bait. He was right. To me, 
Everything had a string attached. You remind me of Jess. I mean, that's how it used to be with us before the divorce. I'd take her to the museums or to the zoo. She'd always climb up onto things, you know, such a climber. She can't not climb over things, into things. Climbed into a tiger pen once. <laughs> with a live tiger. But not anymore? No, things haven't been the same since the divorce. Do you still blame him for everything? No, I have forgiven him. I know to blame Injun now. He would always remind me of my stubbornness. I think I believe that's how I must always be. You know, no ties, no temptation. But then I had Atlanta, my Mariquita. She is almost of an age where she will outgrow my protection. Young girls on the streets in my neighborhood, they get snatched up by local cartels, run drugs, or worse. Some just disappear. Now there is no choice. Everything I do, I do for her. Now I am the fisher. And at the same time, I have come to a way in my life where I must always chase the bait. You named your daughter Atlanta? Yes. It's a beautiful name. I named her after the city. That's where I will take her after this job. That's a good strong name. And a good city. I want for Atlanta to be free. I want for her to have opportunities that I didn't have. I just hope I can be there for her the way my father was there for me. She can be stubborn like her mother used to be and refuse the Fisher's Bay. I think I know now it's a good way to be. I think that my father believed that too. Just changed my life too. She was my second, second wife, second daughter. Apparently I'm the genetic carrier of rebellion because both my daughters got it. I worked so hard to protect Jess and keep her out of trouble. What about you? Did you turn out so good because your parents kept you out of trouble? Me? I was a little hellion myself. Uncontrollable. <laughs> it's in my genes. Mm. Oh, now you know this is different. Still, one thing Jess really hasn't had in her life is a present father figure. Well, you've turned into quite the capable woman. Your father must be very proud of you. Thank you, Jerry. I... I should have realized that sooner, though. I'm sure he knew. Nima, look, I... What is it? I'm sorry about what InGen has done to your island. This isn't the way things should have been done. I don't blame you, Jerry. You're a good person. I see that. But I take my pay from InGen. I owe you something. All right, Jerry. Enough talk. You know where we are? I have a good idea. It's a difficult hike. Do you feel rested? Hungry. A little thirsty, but I, I just want to get to Jess. Good. Shh. Did you guess Dilophosaurus? Hello? That was actually the call of a whooping swan. Dinosaurs shared many features with modern-day birds. For instance, we now know that many theropod dinosaurs from the Jurassic period's vocal organs are just like modern birds. We are arriving at the fourth of seven lookouts along the tour. Your Jurassic Park tour vehicle will stop for five minutes to let you stretch your legs and take photographs of our animals. Next stop, the Jurassic Park Marine Facility and Aquarium. Would you look at this? Are they? They look like feeder tanks. This could be a hatchery. A hatcher what? They're raising these fish to feed another animal. Like at Marine World. Like the killer whales? Precisely. That's a lot of fish. How many whales are they feeding? I don't know. It looks like each of these tanks could feed three or four orcas per day. Oh, well, you're a fish expert now. I can make an educated guess. Look, there's a sign over there. It looks like a schedule or something. 
This is a hatchery. That's the stocking schedule for the tanks. Some tells me these fish aren't for feeding whales, huh, Doc? Hold up. I hear something. <sighs> All clear. Jess. Oh, thank God. Are you okay? Are you hurt? No, I I'm okay. Just, can we go home now? I'm so glad you two are safe, Jerry. How did you manage to get here? We climbed out of the tunnels through a service hatch near one of the tour routes. Luckily, someone left the tour program running. Thanks. You mean... Dr. Sorkin, the phones are not working. I'm sorry? There is no dial tone. You said the phones would be working here. That's odd. My control terminal showed that the main lines here were active. Unless... Of course. Everything is controlled by the computer systems, even the phones. If the power outage outlasted the battery backups, then the system is probably just waiting to be booted up. Get us to the phones, Doc. We don't have a lot of time. Mr. Yoder, I refuse to be pushed around by you any longer. Look, this isn't a day trip. If we don't contact InGen and get another helicopter out here for you all, the next flight over the island is gonna be a wing of B-52s carrying holy hellfire! What? That's right, Doc. They're gonna murder all your precious little pets and sink this island into the Pacific. Dios mio! That's what you meant by Ground Zero? Yeah, that's right. Why didn't you tell me earlier? This is my home! What do you mean, your home? I didn't tell you earlier because I thought we'd be off the island by now. This island is the ancestral home of her people. Wait. What is Dr. Sorkin doing? Laura? Wait, what are you... Where is she going? I don't know. This rotunda. It's where the control room is. She's going to the phones without us. Damn it! Get that elevator back up here! Oh, they've really made a lot of progress in construction here. Paleozoic, huh? Well, most of the specimens here aren't really from the Jurassic period anyway. Ah, Paleozoic. From oldest to newest, Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, Permian. What is that supposed to be? I don't know. Looks like a Mosasaur. Mosa what? It looks kind of scary. Well, it's sort of a, a sea lizard of sorts. You think of a um, big moray eel with a crocodile head. Croco eel? Great. Sounds charming. Don't worry. There are no sea creatures on my list of park animals. Then what are all the feeder fish for? Feeder fish? Yeah, we came through a big room filled with tanks of fish. Laura said they were for feeding other animals, like whales. Hmm. Well, let's not jump to any conclusions. I'll be over by the info desk, okay? Yeah, Dad. Information. Sure could use some now. Oh good. Instructions. Insert operator's key into key slot. Okay. Etc. Etc. Code expires in 24 hours. Morning operations reset procedure. Turn key counterclockwise to input notch and hold for three seconds. Keypad will reset and beep three times. Turn key clockwise to reset. Enter previous code, then new code. Huh. That's easy enough. Huh. Very clever. Looks like they're using numbers from the dates of the Paleozoic era as daily key codes. Okay. So the plaque for the Paleozoic era preceded the oldest period at the display. Maybe the sequence doesn't start at the beginning of the week. Today is Saturday. I need Friday's code. Permian. Sounds right. Okay, best guess.
9251. All right, new code. Let's keep it simple. Relax. See what? Damn it, you careless idiot. Uh, what was that thing? Some kind of spy gear? Yeah, that's right. Top secret. In fact, if you tell anyone about it, I'll have to kill you. You won't lay a finger on her. I was just kidding around. Everyone, I got the elevator working. <sighs> about time. What's going on here? Nothing. We're all cool. Get over it! Let's go, we don't got all day! Dad, my ears. Attention. What's going yes. on? The Lagoon Rotunda and Spectacular is housed in a pressurized underwater environment. We suggest you pinch your nose and push your breath to equalize your ears while we descend. If you experience any lasting discomfort or feel unusually giddy, let your attendant know immediately. Giddy? They're talking about nitrogen narcosis. It's a risk of breathing pressurized air. What makes you the expert? I, uh, saw it in a movie. Whoa! Is that where we're going? I think so. expecting any of this. This is so cool. Careful. I'll lead. Cool. Look at that. I want to speak with Hammond. This can't wait. Can you connect me to Mr. McGuire? Or no, Peter Ludlow. Please hurry. No, look. This is Dr. Laura Oh, Sorkin. I have a bad I feeling about this. Park. I am still on the premises. Get me somebody. Parker, I do not need rescuing. I do not want the bombing waylaid. I it's want it from the stopped. inside. What? It's not contaminated. This is a wildlife preserve. These animals are not diseased. They are extremely endangered. You're not listening hey, to me. This looks like an intercom up here. What? Where? Good find, honey. Laura, it's me, Jerry. Laura? Jerry, I hear you, and I'm glad you're here. This is gonna be a lot easier now. What have you been doing? We're gonna stop the bombing, Jerry. This island must be preserved. I have taken the remaining survivors hostage. There are four others, three Americans and one Costa Rican. I won't let them go unless the plans to bomb the island are completely rescinded. You have no right to hold us like this! Rights are just an ideological construct. Don't turn this into a, a philosophy debate! What rights do the dinosaurs have? Don't they have the right to survive? Do their rights outweigh any of ours? It is not our rights versus theirs. Our dinosaurs are phantoms. 
majestic as they may be, alive as they may be. We brought them into a world that is no longer prepared for them. We have a responsibility to keep them isolated and under reign for the safety of our ecosystem. It's not rights, it's responsibility. And we have a responsibility to preserve our creations and allow them a chance to survive on their own terms. Billy, will InGen stop the bombing? Doubt it. InGen is not the one dropping bombs, it's the US military. And the contingency is based around a biohazard cover story. She may just be delaying the inevitable. If you don't offer me some sort of guarantee that the island will be preserved, I will have to escalate matters. This is lunacy! Fine, put the military on the phone. Hello? Hello? You want to see contamination of the global ecosystem? Laura. Laura, please, listen to them. Listen to reason. You're being irrational. Nature is irrational. Rationalizations haven't gotten results. I think it's time to put matters back in nature's hands. Laura, there are other options here. Holding us against our will to save the dinosaurs is only one poorly thought out solution. You're smarter than that, Laura. I know, Jerry. I know what I'm doing. I clearly express the consequences of threatening this island. I scored a line in the sand that has been ignored and trampled over by InGen, by the government, and now I exercise my resolve. Laura? I'm going to free the Mosasaur. Are you mad? A land dinosaur paddling to the mainland is one thing, but you're talking about releasing an apex predator into over 70% of the global ecosystem. It's only one. It can be recaptured before it eats the last of the humpbacks? Oh, don't be dramatic. Laura, don't. <gasps> Plan B. For the sake of this island and the scientific treasure it holds, I have been forced to take an action. It's not too late. We can reverse this. No. I locked the system down. There's nothing you can do. I've opened the gates and the Mosasaur is free to leave. Laura, you have to- No, Jerry. This isn't up for debate. We have to show InGen- Look out! <gasps> What were you thinking? All right, everybody, be cool. And stay away from the window. Be cool? That's right. What, you want an I told you so? I don't know about you, but I came here to make a phone call. Hello, this is William Yoder, ID 4122. Put me through to Haskell. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The U.S. Embassy. Report as follows. The island is completely overrun. Alpha team killed in action. Save one. Myself. Bravo team killed in action. Two helicopters disabled. Two civilian casualties. I have access to a seaworthy boat and I will evacuate the remaining survivors. Yes, sir. The military may proceed. Ninety minutes. Understood, sir.